we have been learning uh, the life about the life ministry and message of Jesus Christ the life and work of Jesus Christ so uh, last in the last session we were talking about the purpose of incarnation first session we were talking about the doctrine of incarnation and the last session we were talking about the purpose of incarnation the doctrine of incarnation is in fact is the focal point of the study of the life of Jesus Christ so maybe I'm not using any kind of theological jargons otherwise we call it Christology or something like that don't worry about that kind of uh, things that kind of stuff rather we, we, we want to learn the things as simple as possible is it okay good uh, so I just want to see that each and everyone here understands everything very clearly if you have any doubt when after the meeting you can talk to me or we can explain it and even we can have a session uh, as question answer you can ask questions or you can write down some questions and I can answer it somehow I want to make sure that everybody understands everything okay are you happy <laughs> good the purpose of incarnation uh, first thing we have been learning what is the purpose the first purpose is to reveal God to mankind if Jesus was not incarnated and he if, if he was not dwelling in flesh we could never know what kind of God we have of course uh, we have a God and we know that we have a God even the Old Testament saints they knew that they have a God and they knew a lot of things about God because uh, the prophets were giving them many many uh, truths about or talking to them many truths about God even but the thing even those prophets didn't go to heaven or see the things it's all revealed it's all revealed to them unless God reveals something you can never know God how do you see the sun sometimes I ask people how do you see the sun huh? yeah uh, don't say that uh, yeah, we are seeing the sun with our eyes. Yeah, of course, everybody see the sun with their eyes, but we see the sun in the light of the sun. We are not lighting a torch or candle to see the sun. Is it possible? It's not possible. Because, you know, sun, uh, if you want to see the sun, you need to see it in the light of sun itself. We know that the light of the sun or the rays of the sun is traveling maybe eight and a half minutes and it reaches uh, in your eyes and you are seeing sun in that light. We are not seeing sun with the light of something else. Am I right? Likewise, if God doesn't reveal himself, no one can understand God. With their own uh, intelligence or philosophy, no one can understand God unless God reveals himself. And God is ready to reveal, but the thing is, our understanding is limited. Our ability is limited. Our capability, our intelligence, it is all limited. So, even when God reveals, we may not be able to understand everything. And that's what happened to the Old Testament prophets. It's not that God was not ready to reveal himself, but even when he was ready to reveal, they could not bear it. Even Jesus said, when he was leaving his disciples, he said, I have a lot more things to say to you, but if I say those things now, you cannot bear it. But the Spirit of the Lord will come, or the Holy Spirit will come, and he will lead you into all the truths. You get me, my friends? So, unless God reveals himself, no one can understand God. And how can God reveal himself the best way is to come down and show himself to others. And that's the reason why he chose the path of incarnation to show the people who he is. And it was through Jesus Christ. As we have seen in the first session, it was like a seal and it was like the mirror image. It was difficult for them to understand. The Old Testament prophets could not understand it clearly. But in New Testament, in the last days, God has put it on a paper. It's not on a paper, it was on the flesh. So 
So now it is no more a mirror image. It is clear. If you want to know what kind of God we have, you just look at Jesus. That's all. Because Jesus reveals God completely and fully. So the first purpose of incarnation was to make people know God. It was <coughs> to reveal himself to man. And that's what we see in Jesus. All the time, no one has seen God. And in, in John's first chapter, John's gospel first chapter, we have seen only the son who was sitting in the bosom of God has seen God. No one else has seen God. Even in the Old Testament, we know Moses was the most closest person towards God. Right? He was hearing the voice of the Lord and once he said, I want to see your glory. You know what, Jesus, what God said? No man can live after seeing my glory. So God was ready to reveal himself, but he feared that if God reveals his glory, then Moses would have been dying. So he was asking him to stand in the cleft of a rock, and he was walking, while he was walking, he was what, uh, hiding himself with his hands, and Moses was just seeing the backside of God, not the glorious God. You remember the story? I'm not explaining it. So what I said, no one, including Moses, did not see God in his glory. But Jesus was not like that. He was sitting in the bosom of God and he could reveal. And he is the only person who can reveal God completely and fully. So that was the first purpose. And the second purpose? To redeem us. Incarnation was to redeem mankind. <coughs> We are seeing in all the passages that introduces Jesus, including the songs that was sung to the shepherd, it says that he will redeem you, redeem the, his people from their sins. And even uh, the angel was asking Joseph to name the baby as Jesus. You know why? Because he is uh, going to redeem his people from their sins. And that's the reason... Why he is called Jesus. Jesus means Savior. The very same, very meaning of Jesus. What's it? Savior. He will save his people from sins. I told you, it was easy for the Old Testament uh, prophets to heal a person or even raising people from the dead. To raise the people from the dead or to heal the sick. It was not inevitable for Jesus to come in to this world and to die himself. It was not necessary for crucifixion. It was, the crucifixion was not necessary to heal somebody because it happened even in the Old Testament times. Okay? But here, Jesus was giving himself to be died. In fact, uh, you know, if he was not willing to die, no one could kill him. But he was ready to give himself. He gave himself because he wanted to redeem us from our sins. He gave his life as a ransom for many. And the third thing, for what? What was the purpose? The third purpose? It was rule. Because Jesus is not just a savior. He is our Lord. He is our Lord. Even in Old Testament, uh, God was coming down and redeeming people of Israel from the slavery of Egypt. And then, God was considered as their king. And God wanted to continue as their king. God came down to the earth and he said, I have heard the cry of my people and I have seen the afflictions they are having in Egypt and I will come down. I have come down to redeem them and redeemed the people of Israel. And what was his plan? Do you think that redeeming them and leaving them in the wilderness? No. God wanted them to live in his land and he wanted to continue as their king and that's the reason that was the basic understanding of the Israelites they believed in theocracy what is theocracy? it's not democracy it is theocracy God rules that's the basic understanding of the scripture so when Gideon was giving a victory to the Israelites from the hands of the Midianites all those Israelites came to 
Gideon and said, "Hey, we want you to become our king, and not just you. Even after you, we need to see that your children, your sons, are becoming our kings." I don't know what Gideon said. No, I will never become your king. It neither my sons, because Yahweh God is your king. That was the understanding. So God wanted to rule them. Rule them means you know it is not like Pharaoh is ruling uh, Egypt. He wanted to uh, see that every good is happening in their life. He is guiding them and leading them to the good. So that's the reason why he wanted to rule over the people. Likewise, even Jesus saving us from our sins and he is not leaving us in the wilderness. And he wants to rule us, and that's the reason why he is Lord. He is Lord. So that the it's the very same reason why all the uh, apostles they were introducing Jesus not just as the Savior. Everywhere they were introducing Jesus as the Lord. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and you and your household will be saved. You understand? It's not that just believe. in Jesus Christ the savior no believe in him as your lord or confess him as your lord even in romans that's what we see how can we we be saved when you believe that jesus raised him uh, god raised jesus from the dead that is the jesus story you need to believe it in your heart and you need to confess with your lips with your mouth that he is lord and then you will be saved so that is very much needed we you, you need to confess him as lord if you are not confessing him as lord it is not just oh i confess him as lord but if you call him lord then you cannot live a life of your own if you call him lord then he is he rules over you he lords over you you understand my friends so that is that is the basic understanding we need to have jesus is not just a savior never introduce jesus just as a savior because if you introduce jesus as just as a savior you know what happens people will accept jesus very easily it is very easy to accept jesus as a savior but it is very difficult to accept jesus as the lord anybody anybody can accept jesus as a savior because the saving act happens in a moment in a very in one second in a split second when you call upon the name of the lord you are saved but your salvation is not complete if you are not accepting jesus as your lord you get me my friends you get me is it difficult is it difficult no so every time when we uh, speak out gospel when we share gospel with the people emphasize on the lordship of jesus christ the lordship of jesus christ i'm so sorry to say that in these days the church has lost the church always says yeah jesus saves everybody yeah everybody you just confess your sins you will be saved and you will be in heaven now the bible says you need to confess him as lord that is inevitable for your salvation that is inevitable for your salvation what confessing jesus as lord and accepting jesus as lord and living under his control man all people want freedom everybody needs freedom <clears throat> so what what is happening like we have seen in the sinking ship there is freedom you know what satan says it is the same thing the nike people say just do it you can do anything if you want to quarrel do that if you want to drink do that if you want to dance do that disco okay no problem anything lying no problem cheating good you can do anything just do it and you need to remember that his ship is a sinking ship if you want to reach a beautiful shore then you need to see that you are in the ship of jesus christ where there is discipline that's why we are called disciples we are not just believers we are disciples a disciple is living a disciplined life so jesus the in, the 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 uh the purpose of incarnation was not just to save or redeem the people but it was also for 
ruling the people it is to rule the people see um again incarnation is a pattern for christian conduct the fourth thing why jesus why god incarnated in the flesh and lived here for 33 years sometimes i ask people why jesus lived we all know for what purpose or, or for for what purpose jesus died on a cross we know to save us or redeem us from our sins okay so jesus died on a cross his death was inevitable for our salvation but how about our life how about his life why he lived here for 33 years you get me my friends suppose jesus is coming here and at the age of 5 or 6 or even 5 months 10 months he is dying i'm just imagining still your sins will be forgiven isn't it because he is god he is god if he is dying at the age of 10 he is god then certainly your sins will would be you know forgiven but he was living here for 33 and a half years why why he had to live here that much time he was living here to give us an example how we should live it he he wanted to give us a pattern in first peter chapter 2 first <clears throat> peter chapter 2 uh verse 2021 uh for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps jesus lived here for the 33 and a half years leaving us an example so that we also should follow his steps he is an example he is a pattern in fact the word which is written here is uh, something like in the uh, uh, what is a transcript book you know uh, we are just writing uh, on the first line it is written a b c d and the boy the the child is writing the next line you know a b c d and again third line fourth line fifth line is writing like that so the first line is called a pattern right and exactly this word is used by peter here jesus was a pattern to be f- to be uh, followed or even imitated you need to imitate and that's the reason why he has given us an example of living a life so what is happening we are just writing it or you know we are trying to live that life exactly we just look at the life of jesus and we try to live like jesus lived on this planet earth and sometimes we fail it doesn't mean that if a child is uh, writing the first line on the second line when he is writing maybe a looks like d or <laughs> sometimes it is o sometimes it is not exactly the thing but he keep on writing the third line the fourth line the fifth line the sixth line maybe the 10th line he writes a as a and b as b b is no more d but in the first line maybe it is b becomes like d it may happen but always remember do not look at the other lines sometimes you know what happens we are just looking the third line or the fourth line and writing the fifth line now always our eyes should be on the first line the pattern which jesus has given us so that's one of the main reasons why jesus was living uh, in this world and that is uh, a purpose of incarnation and the fifth thing incarnation was the provision for the purpose i will explain it some uh, phrases is not so easy but just write down incarnation was the provision for the purpose there is a purpose for incarnation 
and incarnation is also the provision for the purpose. I will explain it. What is the purpose of incarnation? It was to redeem us. Right? We have seen that the purpose of incarnation, one of the main purpose of incarnation, the main purpose of incarnation is redemption. Much more than everything else. The main purpose of incarnation is redemption. So, Jesus lived in flesh to make our salvation a reality. So that very same thing is the source or even provision for our salvation. That means Jesus came to this world to save and coming to the world and living here and dying that was the provision for the purpose. That is the provision in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 Sometimes these passages we read many times. It says, Him who knew no sin, He made to be sin on our behalf. That we might become the righteousness of God. Him who knew no sin. It says about Jesus. Jesus was the sinless person who ever lived on this planet earth. He knew no sin. But what God did upon him, he made him sin. Don't think that he made him a sinner. God did not make Jesus a sinner, but he made him sin. Sin of you and me. He made him a sinner. He, he made him sin. He, he did not make him a sinner. He made him sin. So God wanted to make Jesus sin so that he can punish the sin of the mankind. That's what we see on the cross. You get me? So to, for God to make Jesus sin of the mankind, he needed to be incarnated. He needed to come to the world and live in flesh. Otherwise, God can never make the second uh, personality of Trinity who lives in uh, heaven a sin. Only when he came in flesh. It was possible for God to make Jesus sin only when Jesus came in flesh. So that was the only way. Incarnation was the, was the only way for God to make Jesus a Jesus sin. Maybe I will say, Jesus was not just an agent of salvation. He was the source of salvation. He was not an agent of salvation, but he was the source of salvation. Let me explain it. Suppose I am going to a doctor, and the doctor just look at me, and he made all kind of diagnosis, and he said uh, that I am going to die because I lack... Uh, some, suppose bone marrow, some kind of problem, uh, bone marrow should be transplanted or something like that. I'm afflicted with cancer or any kind of disease. So he diagnosed it and he prescribed uh, the uh, treatment and he is asking me to undergo the treatment. He is ready to treat. But I could not find anybody who is ready to donate bone marrow. And the doctor says, don't worry, I'm going to give my own born matter to you. So there, he is not just an agent, he is the source of my healing. You get me? Likewise, Jesus came to this world, he was not just an agent, he diagnoses and he prescribes and he provides. He diagnoses, he prescribes and he provides what is needed for me, for my eternal salvation. That is why I said, Jesus is not like other religious leaders. Many religious leaders are coming here and say, you are a sinner. Yes. But, what shall I, what shall I, 
Uh, I do. If you ask the question, maybe he, they will say or prescribe a lot of medicines. Like uh, you need to give alms to the poor. Maybe you need to do this and you need to do puja and all. Uh, a lot of, it doesn't give any good, but what I say, they are prescribing a lot of things. They make a diagnosis and prescribes and they go back to their home. They are an agent, but Jesus was not just an agent. Of course, he diagnoses and he prescribes and he provides. That is why I said that incarnation was the provision for the purpose of incarnation. Okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 8, In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, 6 to 8. Yet among the mature we do impart wisdom, although it is not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glorification. Paul says about Jesus. Jesus was... The source of our glory. He was not just an agent of glorification. He was the source of our glorification. None of the rulers of this age understood this. For if they had, they would have been, he, they, would have not, they would not have been crucified, the Lord of glory. Here Paul says, he's the God of glory. He calls him God of the glory, not because he is showing glory, but because he imparts glory. It's not just an agent, but it is he who makes us glorified. Because the final salvation, it goes, we will tell about it later. The final salvation is uh, glorification. So that glory we are receiving, not from somebody else. Jesus, do not say, go this way and you will get glory. No. He is imparting glory. The salvation is imparted. He is not just an agent, but he is the source of salvation. 